Hello guys, this is Quad. Today I'm going to bring you the highlights of my first week of farming in Project Diablo 2. All these runs were done with my Summon Necro that I spec to mages in the end of the first weekend. I farm really almost every location because this build is super versatile and you are not bound to any special place, so you will see a lot of different stuff happening here. The first drop is this Legend Spike, quite rare item, the Ghost Flame. I was also checking a little bit the uh, Duria, but in the end opted out not to farm it because it's really too long to find it, so I kind of decided not to. The second drop is Tau Rush's belt with 11 MF. Even Mephisto was super easy to farm thanks to the Blood Warp, and he dropped me actually a Gurkha Sanctuary. Really nice roll here. I was using all the tactics to upgrade my character and combining 3 rings yielded these nice free to summoning skills and 33 MF Emmy. So I decided to corrupt it and this was the loudest no in my life. On another run Mephisto dropped me the Tear Haunch, they rolled 2 to defensive auras and 1 to vigor. I was also farming cows, although not for too long because it was not too fast I would say, but the Cow King dropped me the Mage Slayer, one of the new uniques. Cow Sanctuary was kind of easy, but the Decrepify proc was really terrible, but I found their Dragon Scale. And wow, just look at this, fortuitous Ring of Fortune, a perfect one, 40 MF, insane. I was even farming a little bit temples in Act 3, so here I found the Gid's Fortune, let's check the roll. Wow, anti-perfect. Diablo was also pretty easy for this build, so not really a problem, and I found this treasure. Rolled really nice, actually very high on ET and life leech, and eventually decided to corrupt it and added additional attack rating, not too great. I tried to upgrade my character as fast as possible, so I was also gambling coronets and found this one for the assassin with life, two skills and lots of resistances, and after corruption it also became two to assassin and lots of resistances, quite funny. This necro circlet corrupted with cold rest that I used actually for quite a long time. Diablo dropped me the blade of Alibaba. Probably one of the best finds that I sold for I think Vex or Galrune, the Swirling Crystal. Let's check the roll. This one is the Oculus with plus 3 to skills and 19 resistances. And the same item base but a little bit different quality. This time it's a set Swirling Crystal. Town Russia's Leadless Eye with 2 to 1 roll. Meanwhile I was checking things, Shang dropped me the Grave Palm, really good for this build, plus 1 to summoning skills, and eventually I corrupted them both, because I had 2, so 1 rolled with enhanced defense, and the second one with minus target defense, nothing too good for me. I was rolling skillers as well, found 1 masteries, of course, and literally the next one is curses with plus 39 to life, oh my goodness. On the way to Stony Tombs I got a little surprise, a lore rune, come here baby. Found a Shadow Killer in a Chaos Sanctuary. Not sure if Mind Blast Assassins are still good now, I think they are only good for the LOD locations. Pair of unique Heavy Bracers, a Ghoul Hide. And Diablo dropped me a unique Necro Head, the Hierophant Trophy. Let's take a look at the roll. And it's garbage, almost anti perfect all rest. This little Grunge Arm over here, let's look at this one. One to bone crossbow skills with dexterity, not bad. Against Tony Tombs, the creeping feature dropped me a nice small charm. Fire res plus 9 and 7 mf.
Notch Puzzler for relocation. Probably my all-time favorite farming location is the pits. And here we find another small charm. This one 15 to life and 10 to lightning rest. Might have been even the same run, the set wing helm. This is good old G face. And another small charm over here from the sparkly chest. This one is 20 to life and 6 defense. Seems like a lot of drops from Kava Sanctuary, but I'm not surprised. An Infector's Gang dropped me the Trunk Ghoul's Gloves with 11 to poison skill damage. Here Diablo dropped me two things. The first one is Natalia's Shadow, Garbage Roll, and the second one is Laying of Hands with 43 Fire Res. Another drop from Pete's. Again, the Tower Rush's weapon, this one perfect, 2-2-2 two, two, two roll. An L rune. No, come on, the Gal rune from this Devil King. Here I had a bunch of GCs and one of them was actually nice. Faster run walk and max damage AR GC. From Chaos I got an East Rune. And later on from the Popable, here we are getting... And we are getting our second Gal Rune. Nice! They were also generous enough to provide me another useful small charm. Let's take a look at it. 20 to life and 10 to attack rating, not bad. Devil King Camp and another Mal Rune. Or I have to say the first one, right? At the pit level 2 we get the chances, let's check the roll. Perfect 40%, oh yeah. Here I check one GC in my stash before identifying it and it's actually summoning skills for Druid, not bad. And another Necro Head from Diablo, this time it's a Sakaba Skull. This is Bone Flame with 3 skills, high all resistances and high physical damage reduction, wow! Here is another attempt to find a good amulet combining rings and with it, this is plus 3 to poison and bone. And after corruption, free to mana after each kill, and also 17 MF on top, really nice. Here we get a second piece from the Trangul set. This is Trangul's guys. And this lonely GC was waiting for me here, let's check it. This is poison and bone skills with force to max damage. Finally I dropped the weapon that I use myself, the Grim Scythe. Let's check the roll, it's a plus 3 to necro skills and plus 4 to raising skeletal mage. Another GC from Chaos, plus 1 to traps, ok. These charms I still don't know if they are worth it, plus 3 to poison skills and 21 life, please tell me. The primeval soul from Bale. He is a bit tough to kill to be honest, but with skills it all goes well. And here, probably the best highlight, we find ethereal bone shape with almost perfect roll, and while I'm checking it, we also get an AFK sewer rune, <laughs> amazing. Here is a second Gids drop. This one is better, 34% MF and 12 price reduction. In the World Stone Keep we get the Colossus Sword. This is part of the Bull Cathos set, with really low roll this time. And actually my first rainbow facet over here, let's check it. It's a fire minus 5 plus 4. 
And remember I told you about that Mal rune, so this one is another Mal rune. And we get another Primeval Soul. I heard they go for half a high rune or something. After hunting a market I got 4 perfect Grims burning dead and decided to corrupt them all to see if I can get something cool. Chance of crushing blow, yep. Next one. Enhanced damage, yep. Next one. IAS and crushing blow, amazing. Next one. Brick, awesome. And the last one. Oh goodness, two sockets, wow. I put a lightning and cold resistance jewel there. Actually a really great find over here in the Plains of Despair, looking for Ejul. This one is 2 throw with 27% deadly strike, and this is a Furial of course. Followed by another armor, that is Lacquered Plate, it's part of Taurasha's set, let's take a look. 79, later on corrupted into Brick. And finally, the first Larzuk puzzle box in the Worldstone Keep. Haven't used it yet though. And as you can see, I transitioned to maps just to try it out and got a couple of drops there as well. This is another perfect Taos weapon. Along with Spired Helm, what it's gonna be. Minus 10 plus 14 Nightwing's Veil, really good. And in the Tombs of Zultan Cool, I get another Poison Skill damage and 8 FHR. And just to wrap it up, we get a Cham Rune, along with a Hell Rune, of course. So this was pretty much the first week of farming and as you can see I transitioned to maps as I wanted to figure out how does it compare. You can also see here the best drops and all the runes I found. So in the week 2 I'm going to farm solely maps and yeah we're just going to compare where the drops are better. So thank you for watching as always and enjoy your season, bye!